Now let's turn to the um, task of actually implementing collaborative filtering and look at the complexity of the implementation. Uh, the most expensive step in implementing um, collaborative filtering is the, the step of finding the K most similar users or the K most similar items, the, the neighborhood uh, of an item or a user. Remember, what, what we had to do to find the K most similar item was to take the item and compute its similarity with respect to every other item. Uh, and this required us to compute, for example, a cosine or a centered cosine distance between the item of interest and every other item. If you actually did this at every step, uh, we'd have to uh, actually look at every entry in the utility matrix. And so the, the complexity of doing that turns out to be the size of the utility matrix U. Now, since the utility matrix can be really, really large because there are many, many users, millions of users and millions of items, clearly it's impractical to do this at runtime. So what we really have to do is to pre-compute. Uh, pre-compute for every item the set of other similar items, or for every user, the set of similar users. But even a naive pre-computation can take a really long time. Suppose there are n, uh, n, uh, n items and we're doing item-to-item -item collaborative filtering. Uh, for each item, uh, we'd have to compute its similarity to every other item. Um, and so the complexity of doing that is a product of the number of items and the size of the utility matrix. Now, uh, so since the utility matrix can be really large and the number of items can be really large, uh, the product of these two is clearly a very large number. Uh, and so even a naive pre-computation can, uh, can be too expensive to do in practice. So how do we deal with this? Now, in previous lectures, we looked at a way of doing this. And that technique, uh, those are the techniques for near neighbor search in high dimensions. For example, locality sensitive, uh, locality -sensitive hashing. You can use something like LSH uh, to uh, take an item and quickly find uh, a set of um, near neighbors to that item, uh, or take a user and find a set of near neighbors to that user, and do that in advance. Uh, in practice, you might do something like this, uh, you know, once in a day, for, for, for example, or once every few hours. We can also use uh, clustering um, to, uh, to group users um, and items into, into smaller clusters and thereby speed up the process by restricting the search to within a cluster as opposed to in, to in, in the entire set of items or users. And finally, we can use a set of techniques called dimensionality reduction methods, which we'll cover in an upcoming lecture. What are the advantages and disadvantages of collaborative filtering? The biggest advantage of collaborative filtering is that it works for any kind of item. It doesn't matter whether the item is books or music or videos or um, uh, news articles or people. Uh, collaborative filtering just works for any kind of item without requiring any feature selection, which is actually a, 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 the biggest advantage of collaborative filtering because it turns out to be a really tough problem to find the right set of features for something as complicated as a movie um, or, 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 or a piece of music. Um, and this, it sort of also explained the huge popularity of collaborative filtering because it sort of obviates this need for feature selection for complex things such as images and movies and music and so on. That said, collaborative filtering also has a number of disadvantages. The first of these is cold start. For collaborative filtering to work, you need enough users in the system who have rated enough items. Remember, we need to, f given an item, we have to find a set of other similar items, or given a user, we have to find a set of other similar users. But if there are not enough users in the system, it's hard to find a match. The second problem is, is one of sparsity. Even when we do have enough users uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the system, uh, because there are so many items, typically there are millions of users and millions and millions of items, most users have not rated most items. And therefore, the user ratings matrix is very, very sparse indeed. Uh, and it's hard to find uh, you know, a, a user, uh, a pair of users who've actually rated the same set of items. Right? So remember, suppose I wanted to predict the uh, rating for a user um, uh, X and an item I, I need to find other users who also rated item I. It might be really hard to find uh, such a set of users because of sparsity. The next problem is the first rater problem. Suppose we add a new item to the catalog, right? Uh, it's, you, it, you cannot make, recommend this new item to anybody because the new item doesn't have any ratings. Um, and 
uh, esoteric items, for instance, that are actually, uh, you know, there may be a few people who really love the item, but the number of people who like the item is really small, uh, tend to have a smaller number of ratings, and it's hard to make uh, recommendations for those items too. And the final problem of collaborative filtering is that it tends to have a popularity bias. Let's take a really popular uh, movie uh, or, uh, or book like Harry Potter. Now, lots of people tend to give high ratings uh, to such a popular, a popular book or movie. Um, and collaborative filtering will therefore tend to recommend um, a popular book or movie uh, to, to almost everyone in the system, uh, regardless of whether they'd actually like it or not. Uh, just because uh, the neighborhood of any item will include popular items. At Amazon, we used to call this problem the Harry Potter effect. And it, the Harry Potter effect need not be a bad thing. Uh, recommending popular items generally works out well. But it's, you know, uh, the problem is if every item uh, that's recommended is a popular item, the popular items can completely crowd out the unique recommendations uh, that can be made for a specific user and you have to take special steps to avoid the popularity bias from washing out the specific recommendations. Now that we've seen some of the difficulties with collaborative filtering, we can design hybrid methods to overcome those difficulties. For example, we can add content-based methods to collaborative filtering. We can add item profiles um, to deal with the new item problem and make recommendations of new items to users. Or we might you know, take new users and use demographic information about new users uh, to build synthetic profiles for them, uh, and thus deal with the new user problem. Um, another approach uh, is to implement two or more different recommender systems and combine their predictions, perhaps using the linear model. For example, you could use a global baseline recommender uh, and combine that with collaborative filtering, and let's see how to do this. So here's a problem. We'd like to estimate Joe's rating for the movie The Sixth Sense. The problem is that Joe has not rated any movie similar to The Sixth Sense, according to our measure of similarity. And so using uh, the collaborative filtering formula that we saw in the previous slides, uh, we can make no prediction for Joe's rating for the movie The Sixth Sense. This is a problem that arises from the sparsity of the rating matrix. So here's an approach called the global baseline approach. Um, and it's, it's actually very, very simple. Suppose in our, in our system, the mean movie rating is 3.7 stars. 3.7 is the average rating for across all movies and all users. And we observe that the six cents, um, the, the, the average rating for six cents is 0 0.5 stars above the mean movie rating. People like the six cents uh, on average, greater, you know, uh, more than the average movie. We also notice that Joe rates 0.2 stars below the average rating for other users, right? Uh, this is not, remember, this is not Joe's rating for uh, the sixth sense or for any specific movie, but if you take the average of Joe's rating, Joe turns out to be a tough rater, and his average rating is 3.5 stars, as opposed to the mean rating of 3.7 stars. And so Joe's rating, Joe's rating in general are 0.2 stars below average. Now we can use these uh, three numbers to come up with the baseline estimate for uh, the user Joe and the movie Sixth Sense. We start with the mean rating, which is 3.7. Notice that the Sixth Sense is 0.5 stars above average, um, and then we subtract um, the 0.2 uh, because Joe's rating is on average 0.2 stars below the average rating, um, and we predict that Joe will um, give uh, the six cents four stars. Notice that in this case, uh, we have not used any specific information about the movies Joe has rated, or uh, they, we don't need Joe to have rated any movie similar to six cents in order to make this prediction. All we need is to have enough users and uh, who have actually rated the six cents, uh, so, so that we can actually compute an average rating for uh, for the uh, you know for the six cents. Now what we'd like to do is actually combine this global baseline rating with collaborative filtering. So let's look, let's look at an example. So the global baseline estimated that Joe, Joe will give the six cents four stars. 
Now suppose we use a collaborative filtering, a nearest neighbor approach, um, and we, we actually find out that Joe didn't like uh, the movie Science, um, and um, Science actually happens to be a movie that's very similar uh, to The Sixth Sense. It's actually by the same director. Um, and so, um, and let's say the similarity between Science and Sixth Sense is, uh, is 1.0. Uh, we find out that Joe didn't like Science, um, and in fact Joe rated Science one star below his average rating for all movies. Um, so now we can combine the global baseline estimate and the collaborative filtering refinement um, and come up with the final estimate. So since the uh, global baseline estimates that Joe will rate the six and four stars, uh, whereas the collaborative filtering gives it a negative one uh, below his um, average rating, uh, so we can, we can just um, uh, add those two ratings and predict that Joe will rate the six tens three stars. So notice that this approach actually takes a linear combination of uh, two independent classifiers, a global baseline classifier um, and the collaborative filtering classifier, and takes the sum of those, um, you know, it takes the sum of those predictions. And if you wanted, we could have weighted these predictions in different ways as well. In this case, we weighted both of those uh, equally. So finally, here's the uh, formula that you can use to implement the, the combination uh, between the global baseline and a collaborative filtering. Let's uh, define Sij to be the similarity of items i and j. Um, and given an item i, we are going to find its k nearest uh, neighbors. Um, and uh, we are only going to find the k nearest neighbors that have also been rated by user x. Um, and our goal uh, is to estimate the rating for user x um, and item i. And uh, above here, I've given the, the simpler formula that we had, which was just a, a weighted average rating uh, for all the items in the neighborhood nix. Uh, now we're going to add in the global baseline idea. Uh, and here's what the new formula looks like. Uh, we're going to take um, estimate the rating rxi to be uh, the sum of a baseline rating and the collaborative filtering refinement. B, uh, BXI here is the baseline estimate, um, and the baseline ex estimate for user X and item I is itself the sum of three components. Uh, mu, which is the overall uh, mean movie rating in the system. BX, which is the rating deviation of user X, which is just the average rating uh, that user X gives across all movies that he has rated, uh, minus mu. Uh, and BI is similarly the rating deviation of movie I. And uh, so if you add the, those three up, you get BXI, which is a baseline rating for user X and item I. And then we are going to add in the collaborative filtering piece, um, which is the same as the formula we had uh, before with the, with the weighted average, uh, weighted by uh, similarity of item I and item J uh, in the neighborhood. Um, however, instead of using RXJ, which is the rating of user X for item J, we're just going to subtract out the baseline piece and only look at uh, the, uh, the, the the deviation in the rating uh, uh, for the for uh, for the item from the baseline. Since we've already added the baseline piece, we don't want to double count it uh, in the second piece here as well. So we subtracted out the uh, the, the the baseline ratings uh, from the collaborative filtering piece, um, and this gives us the final uh, formula uh, that combines collaborative filtering um, and uh, the baseline approach.